In the spirit of International Women's Day, which took place on the 8th of March 2020 and has done so for over a century, this month is a global celebration of the social, economic and political achievement of women. In that spirit, Tea Time has decided we will not be left out in celebrating our amazing women. We love our men doing amazing things, but this show is going to be all about women for women and by women. Join us in the studio to discuss women-related issues are Ekene Ezeji and Ebele Moloa. Ekene is an experienced television producer, a wife and a mother, while Ebele is a vocal feminist who has worked on various women-led protests like Say Her Name Nigeria and church me too and of course i have my amazing co anchor if i all right <laughs> hi hello hi. Yeah. it is an honor to have you both here mm -hmm. yeah. okay I'm did you do anything well. special for international women's day no. <laughs> did you? I, I sent messages to some women that i really you know i want okay. to encourage them so yeah, nice. yeah. okay Mm, okay, so, okay then. Yeah, well, it's over to me then. I'll be taking this segment. So, mm -hmm. um, I'll be talking about self-confidence and owning our spaces and what it means for each person and what we think it looks like. Competition amongst women actually steps to achieve real confidence. So, I want to, we're going to be looking at the steps to achieving real confidence. Um, I want to start with a quote by Yann Love Vazant, and that says, Loving yourself has nothing to do with being selfish, self-centered, or self-engrossed. It means that you accept yourself for what you are. Loving yourself means that you accept responsibility for your own development, growth, and happiness. And with that, I want to kick off this session on self-confidence and owning our own spaces. Mm -hmm. I like the use of that term, owning our spaces. We tend to use a lot of terminology, and sometimes we understand what we mean. Other times, it's like we're lost in translation. So today, we're going to be doing straight talk, mm -hmm. no cliches, or as Ife would put it, <laughs> no lullaby motivation tips, please. <laughs> So we're going to be breaking down what self-confidence means to mm. each person yeah. and why, because this conversation comes up often, that why women seem to end up competing against themselves. Maybe you have a lot to say about that rather mm. than being <laughs> each other's cheerleaders <laughs> and how we get from self-depreciating dispositions like imposter syndrome mm. to achieving real self-confidence, mm. owning and even autographing our own space, a.k.a. Mm. I was born for this. Right. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, do, I, I, do you want to say something? I love that, you know, we are actually talking about this. Um, for someone like me, and I speak for a lot of people, millennials who are just in the break of starting their life or starting their careers and stuff, we have no idea what we're doing. We all want to be successful. We all want to be confident, act confident, and be comfortable in our skin and blah, blah, blah. But the truth of the matter is that we're all freaking out and we don't know what it looks like. Honestly, when you say that, that's a surprise <laughs> to me because a lot of millennials, I look at them and I'm really... I don't know, I have a lot of admiration for yeah. a lot of young ladies because uh, what they're dealing with is quite... It is. Quite I mean, and I'll give us props where, you know, I'll, give, I'll, I'll tap our backs where we have, mm -hmm. but we, there's still a lot we can learn, especially from people like you that have already been in the space a lot longer. And, and when we're talking about, like, corporate spaces especially, okay. we have no idea what we're doing. For me, I think I'll come from a personal experience and what I deal with. So, you know, when it comes to imposter syndrome and when people talk about it, it was recently I realized that there is a name for what it is I deal with, which is imposter syndrome mm. and I st I'm still finding it difficult to accept that fact because I'm not the kind of person that would blow my trumpet. I feel like when the job is done, the job is done. Mm. I did it, I did it well and most times I look at it as a collaborative effort. Yeah. Even when I know that I put in more than 70% to get the job done um, and others were busy scrambling around the 20%, I still want to admit that it is a team effort yeah. and that I cannot be who I am today without the help well, of why every... Why do you feel the need to do that? I don't know. I feel like... I feel like I just have that personal need to appreciate everyone's efforts, no mm -hmm. matter how little it is. So I'm, I won't be the kind of person to want to shout to the moon or anywhere that, oh, I got this award or, oh, I was the brain behind this project. Mm -hmm. I think I'm that kind of person that wants to sit back to say, okay, this was done well and it was done good and I'm moving on to the next thing. Um, so I'm deliberately trying to project. blow my own trumpet <laughs> to say, mm. I was behind this project, I was behind this conversation, mm. I started this, mm. you know, and I, I, I still don't see myself as doing something I'm surprised because you're in the media space a lot. Yeah, that you don't. Mm -hmm. yeah but um, what intrigues I, I, me I is that a lot of women have that yeah, no, disposition. I think, I, think it's a, I think it's conditioning. Right. I think women as a whole have just been taught to just not blow their trumpet because yeah. imagine a woman coming and saying oh yes I've done this I've done this I've done this and other people are like oh, why is she shouting mm. like it's not I think it's something we've all just learned to just 
not say what we've done because yeah. it just makes us look more humble and yeah. it makes us look a bit more like, like you're fashion. a woman, you're proper, yeah. you're not really shy, you're not proud because yeah. we're not meant to be proud. Yeah. Mm. Um, so it makes sense that a lot of women are dealing with that and that's why I'm really happy with the way millennials, like you said, are handling it is, even if they're not doing that much, yeah. they're, they're, they're saying it. Yeah. Like they're just putting it <laughs> yeah. out there because they just want everybody to know, I'm doing this, yeah. I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And I think it's something that we're gradually yeah. breaking out of. Yeah. Like now, like women are saying like, oh yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Yeah. I have to agree with you on that because mm. I don't have that problem. Well, I get the social the conditioning problem. thing, yeah. right? Mm. But when I'm looking at it from this angle, even mm. when it's a guy coming out to say, I did this and I did mm, that. I feel still, like, why are you making noise? Mm, like, okay, you've done it. Move on to the next thing. I think mm, that is just has to be a who between, I am, right? Because the millennial thing, I'm, uh, that one gets to me a bit. I'm not mm. sure. Sometimes, my, my own personality, talking about I, I, millennial I, don't, I like things. substance. I don't want right. to I see what, what they say they've doing. done yeah. and I tell myself I've done way more than this. Mm. I never exactly. thought of, exactly. like, okay, I think there's something these people are doing right that I need to learn. Mm. I think for us, um, we are... A, a, we are a that's a generation that people undermine a lot. It's like yeah. you, you want the fast life. You want you don't want to grow. You don't want to do this. You're you don't lazy. want to do this. And <laughs> I think they forget that our struggles just look very different. So we have a culture of talking about it. Mm. I'm not gonna have a problem with that ever. I feel like my problem is that I, I talk about it too much that I get comfortable in my space. Mm. So I'm saying that oh okay for example this show I it's my idea or something. I'm not mm. gonna be ashamed to say that. In fact I want everybody to know. But that, I think the flip side with that is that the, you, the problem you get with that is that you for forget that there's more you can do and if you're too busy horning blowing your own horn about what, you about done, what you've done you are not that motivated to do more well i guess maybe looking at it because we'll, we'll probably move on to something else but looking at it from another perspective how i came upon the imposter syndrome was last year i was watching tennis and i saw i watched the match between serena williams you know like the end match and then i watched the men's match and the way they were Two, two, two. Mm. And I said to myself, these women are playing like they're apologizing. And this is yeah. Serena Williams at the top of her mm. game. And I recognized myself in that. And I said, mm. you know, even when people put me in a position to do something, I want to be perfect yeah. before I out myself. And yet you see men, you know, they just come there and, and, and they're ready to take the yeah. space. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So you just feel like you're not worthy. Somehow in your mind, you want to really be at the top of your game right. before you now get on the big stage. Whereas the men just land there and they learn on the job. I also feel like women really underestimate how good they are. Mm. That's, that's exactly what Because even as mediocre as you feel like you are, you're still better than a lot of the men that's that the actually thing. put yeah. themselves yeah. out yeah. there. And I think mm. we just have a, we have this nature of just, we don't count our victories as victories. Yes. We just count them as, eh, By the that's what, yeah, yeah. I, I was, was lucky enough. Or, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was a team effort. <laughs> and yeah. But then what do you think? Because you said when, when we do the millennial thing, mm. you, it doesn't, you don't, you know. Yeah, not. I have a problem with that because I feel that there's too much, um, do you say, forming. Mm. Um, and I, I want <laughs> substance. So I prefer the other way. I prefer when you say less. And then I see that you actually have you, more. That. But you now I find that everybody knows how to package. Mm. And then when you now stay with a person long enough, you realize that, okay, maybe yeah, like really. 50, 60% is packaging. Mm. I would rather discover that you undersold yourself. That's my own. I prefer people right. who are understated. Mm. But since as a millennial, so it's a lot of times now when I see people projecting, I'm waiting for the dust to settle. Because I'm mm. thinking, let's wait and see what you actually what are made really of. Yeah, There's so. a part of your... Um, Intro. intro that we have on touch where you said women competing against Please each other she said you were going to talk about it so, so have I you experienced mm. that i don't so i i get the idea but i don't agree with it okay mm. and i don't agree with it in the sense that i think the idea again conditioning i think it comes from this idea that women first of all are not meant to compete with each other I think there's this idea that women are meant to be, you know, holding hands and jolly and everything. Yeah. But if you see something, someone has it, you want it, you go for it. Yeah. That's how I see it. Maybe I don't. Maybe you're see looking it. at the competition in the way. In the, what came to mind when mm. I thought of that was this perception of women as backbiting, catty. But we all do know, it. Backstabbing. Yeah, it's a human thing. You're right. Actually, let me even agree with that mm -hmm. first. But yeah. I'm trying to say, you know, where I'm coming from when I think of why women may tend to do it mm. in a way that jars or makes people notice it more is that. When, this is the perception I'm stereotyping yeah, yeah. now, mm. when women gather together, we don't often tell ourselves the truth. It seems. Right. We tend to want to, you know, mollycoddle ourselves a bit, pamper ourselves. So you say, oh, you look really nice, but you, you know, you don't, you know, the straight talk doesn't seem to be right. as normal. And so you still have that perception about that person and you go behind the person's back and say it. So I wish we had more women who were mm. more direct with each I, other. I, I think one of the things I've noticed with, with me personally is that 
the space that I, I have competed with women are spaces that are hard for women to get into to begin with. Mm. Okay. Um, and so there is this viciousness that a man isn't really my competition, even though it's a very skewed way of <laughs> thinking, really? mm -hmm. um, that the man isn't my competition, yeah. it's the yeah. woman. Even if the woman sense. is not even in my caliber, like let's say I'm, I'm actually much better and there's no, there's no actual competition, mm. right? But I still just always tend to you go to the her. woman yeah. more so like so it's about how she dresses and is that getting her benefits do I need to change my dressing or how she talks is she like like copy that what do they want mm -hmm. I think we've always sometimes as a woman one of my biggest struggles is that I feel like I have to perform I have to be something or in a certain way mm -hmm. so I, I then look at other women like oh so what are you doing oh your hair or oh okay so what does that mean and how do they treat that person that does the certain things well, do I want to be treated positive, like that mm -hmm. I like, I like how you put it negative. Yeah. But yeah. for me I, I, I used to have that mindset to say women are not competitive mm -hmm. with each other for a very long time mm -hmm. until it hits me and I realized that a lot of women you, you, the thing is we are here and I can say to an extent we are enlightened and exposed mm -hmm. and there are ways we would relate but a lot of women see them themselves as competition when is you it come bad? to it. It is saying. bad, definitely. Okay. So you get, let me use the most mundane example. You go into an event. If I'm walking into an event and of course I do digital marketing and I see my digital marketing colleagues, guys, mm. it's easy for me to flow. Like they are ready to speak to you as mm -hmm. you're coming in. They're like, oh, hi, Elsie, it's been a while. How are you? Mm -hmm. But you cannot get that same energy when you walk into a room full of ladies. Everybody has their nose high and, oh, if she doesn't see me first and say hi first. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one attitude we need to deliberately, like, I know it's not going to stop or just stop abruptly, mm -hmm. but we need to deliberately take that attitude out of what I don't know if it's going to be from the way we train up the next generation to say, you have to have cutsy. That's a long not time just, I, th I, I think mean, it has, I, 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 maybe it's just me. I still just, first of all, I think we're taking the idea of competition for women a bit more seriously than we do with men. Mm. Because men compete. men compete to the point where they're killing themselves. Mm. Gang rival, th like, it's a, it's, that's a whole different scope. Mm. But then we seem to hammer on this, women are competing, women are competing, mm. like it's not happening. And that's, I, I think that's why I have a problem with it because right. it happens across both genders, but we seem to be hammering it with women because society is also trying to instill that competition in us. Yeah. Because it happens with men. And I think what you're saying boils down to what she's saying where the men don't necessarily see you as competition because yeah. in, their, in their world, it's their world. Right. So when you come in, they're obviously going to be like, oh, hey, but in their head, it's they like... They don't feel threatened yeah. by you. They're not if threatened they, by you because you're a woman. You then then you'll be dealing with the same... Yeah, yeah but probably. then you're going to feel threatened mm. by a woman because that space wasn't created for you. It's a man's world, apparently. Mm. So... Any woman that steps in there, if another woman is coming in, you're going to feel like, oh, she's coming to take my spot. Okay. Oh, I wish yeah. I could respond to that, but yeah. we need to go <laughs> on a quick thoughts. break. <laughs> and when we come back, we definitely have more to discuss. All right.